Hey guys, this is Justin Figueroa, and today I'll be teaching you guys how to calculate weight imbalance quick and easily. Weight imbalance is a critical part of your pre-flight planning, and it's a, an important skill every pilot should learn. So luckily, weight imbalance is not the hardest math, right? You don't have to get the formula of algebra and put it all together. It is just as simple as one time you get it down, you're gonna put that math together once and you're gonna be like, oh, I can do this every single time after that. So why do we calculate weight imbalance in the first place? So there is no reg that states that we have to do a weight imbalance, but there is another reg that states that we have to do our takeoff and landing distances. And that's why we have to do the weight imbalance in order to know our takeoff and landing distances. Here's just a few negative things that you may expect if you are overweight higher takeoff speeds and longer takeoff rolls, longer landing rolls, reduced performance, including slower cruise speeds and slow climbs, higher stall speeds, limits on landing gear and brakes exceeded, more load put on the structure of the aircraft than it was designed for. Okay, so now it's the balance. So why does balance matter? Well, because the CG can't be too far forward or too far back because that will make it dangerous and unstable. So now you guys, I'm going to walk you guys through how I calculate the weight imbalance. So there is multiple methods, but this is what I found that works for me. Two, three, two. All right. Can you see my phone on there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically you go to your aircraft selection. And from there, you're going to be looking for, let's see, we can go through these, the specs. And in the specs, you're going to find that you have the empty weight that we're going to need. So we will pull that from there. Uh, we're going to have the arm and then we're going to have the moment as well. These are critical information that you will put on the weight and balance in order to fill out the weight and balance. That's the start of it, right? Um, so in this example here, though, these, this got all pulled from the POH itself. So this is talking about our aircraft November 232 Tangle Foxtrot. So if I go back here real fast, uh, this one's also talking about the 232 Tangle Foxtrot for this POH. Uh, so we'll go, go ahead and use the actual numbers right out of the POH uh, to configure the actual weight of the aircraft for the empty weight and all. Um, so first starters here, we're going to get the empty weight and we're going to put it right up here at the top for weight. So we're going to go ahead and put 1731.2 and even we put up here too, November 2 three, two, tangle foxtrot. We're gonna have our arm, because they already gave us our arm, which is nice, 88.96. And then a moment as well, one, five, four, zero, zero, seven point one. Now we have that. Now we're gonna use our weights uh, of the, we need to find the weight of the pilot and the front passenger. Uh, in order to get the pilot and the front passenger, you need to know who you're flying with. Um, so we're going to be flying me and the, uh, my film guy here. So this has, like I said, has a lot of hard math to do. Uh, it's not too hard of math, but we'll be using our calculator a lot back and forth to make sure that we're getting all the calculations uh, correctly. We will be pulling that out and then we'll go 170 and I am currently 168. So we got 338 for me and Lee. And the cool thing about uh, weight and balance is it's either multiplication or division. So we can never add up any of the arms. The arms are gonna stay as is because it's talking about more of a reference of how the distance it is from a datum. But how we will do it to get the moment, if we don't have the current moment for our, the pilot front passenger, what we do now is we get this number here, so we get 338, and now we to get the moment, what we'll do is we'll multiply multiply that by 80.5, and it's going to be 27. The nice thing that we have here at Thrust is they actually get all these arms from the POH. Uh, other than that, if you're back at home or if you have a POH that you don't have it customly. Uh, put in then you would have to actually go in the POH and find the arm to make sure that you have the right distance from the datum So we have no rear passengers today. So we're gonna have zero here and a zero there Baggage area. So today we may be carrying our backpacks maybe some laptops or some uh, camera crew stuff 
So we're going to add, we're going to go ahead and add 20 right here. And again, when we add that 20 now, we could multiply that here. So we're going to go 20 times the 142.8, which is going to give us 2,000. Eight, five, six. And just a reference of this, they're talking about it. See how I multiplied this, the weight and the arm, and I got the moment. Well, not only can you do that, let's say if we didn't have the arm, just like here, we well, and if we have both of these, you'll see that I will be able to divide my moment by my weight and get my arm, right? So baggage area two, we usually don't have it too much stuff in there unless we're going on a long trip. So we'll go ahead and put zero there. Now Zero fuel weight. Now this is where we have to add all this up and all this up as well. So basically we'll start from the top here. That's going to give us 2,089.2. Then we're going to go to the opposite side here, 154. We got moment of 1, now that I have no arm here, as we said earlier, we're going to have to divide this number. So we get that number. We divide it by the weight, 2,089.2. And then we're going to get our, a arm of 88.10. Now fuel in pounds. So what is fuel in pounds and how do we get that, right? So as you can see down here, it does say fuel weight. The fuel weight is 6.01. So with that being said, that's how much fuel weighs. So then all we're going to do here is we're going to go 6, right, 6.01. And then we're going to multiply it by how much fuel we have in our plane, right? So let's just say, for example, we have tabs in our aircraft, right? So tabs in our aircraft is 17 on one side, and then we got 17 on the other side. So we just add those two up. I got 34. So if we did that, 6.01 times the 34, that's going to give us 204, 34. So we'll put 204 in this box here. And now we have, again, the arm. So we can multiply that by 95. We'll get 19412.3. From there, that is calculated correctly. And then what we're gonna do is we look, we're looking for the ramp weight. So now we have the fuel in the plane, right? And we have the zero fuel weight of the whole entire aircraft. Now we're gonna add these two numbers up to get the ramp weight. 2,293.2, cool. Now we're gonna do the other side. Same thing as you do to one side, you're gonna do to the other side. 184.06, 7.1. Plus 19, 412.3. Now we got 203 on this side, 203, 479.4. All right, now we have that. Now in the POH, we'll go back and look for taxi and run up. Now it depends. This one is basically considering, hey, how much of time am I spending in taxi? How much is am I spending in run-up? How far is your taxiway at home? If you have a long, long runway and you have to taxi for hours and it usually takes you 30 minutes to get out, then it could be totally up to it. So what we do in that factor is we're going to check an RPOH today to kind of see what it exactly says. So it says fuel allowance here. It says for engine start, taxi, run-up, it says minus 8. So it's calculated saying that we usually use minus 8 as far as for the taxi run-up. So we're going to put minus 8 of how much fuel we use for run-up. And then from there, what we're going to do is go back to the calculator. Calculator 76. So all we did was minus 8 multiplied 95, 76. And now what I like to do is I put a little 1 here and another 2 here because these are the ones, 1 and 2, are we going to be graphing for our ramp takeoff weight and our landing weight. Now that we come here, how do we get our ramp takeoff weight? Right, we get the ramp weight and we subtract by the taxi and runup because you have used that field now, right? So I'm going to give you that 2301.2. And the same thing you do to one side, you do to the other, just like we talked about earlier. 202719.4. And we're going to divide that by this side on this side. 
We've got 88 for the arm here. 0.09. We're here at the fuel burn now, and now we're gonna basically, for fuel burn, we talk about uh, how much fuel we actually use that day. So for this example here, you would fi you usually find it in your POH, you'll go in there, but we'll just say we're gonna be using 10 gallons of fuel per hour. So you times that by that six, right? And it usually gives you 60, but let's say we're gonna be going um, and flying for two hours, right? So if we're flying for two hours, we're gonna do 120. 120 and then we're here 120 and then we want to multiply that by 95 and it gives that 11,400 oh no oh. so also right here that we have to get the rate ramp weight right so how do we get the ramp weight again all right that's right so we get the moment and the weight right you divide those two and we can get the arm so I'm gonna go ahead and do that finish that up that's gonna give me the 88.7 there now we have that um, now we need the landing weight right so how to get the landing weight, it makes sense to us, right? So we have the ramp takeoff weight first, and then this is the fuel we burned, so we're gonna be landing with whatever fuel we burned off that ramp takeoff weight. So we'll go ahead and subtract that part, subtracted by the 120 fuel we burned, and then we're gonna get 2,181.2, and then we're gonna go to the other side, do the same exact thing, 191.319. And we're going to grab that number and we're going to divide it by the other side to get our arm. Cool. Now this, this is the part where the magic happens, right? So we just figured out all that and it's not that bad, right? We went through it pretty quickly and we're able to calculate all the information. Again, all this information comes from your pH. And always remember the simple rule of weight times arm equals moment. So weight times arm equals the moment. And then to get the other way around, it's moment divided by weight equals the arm, right? So now that we have all the numbers, now we need to plot it, right? So we're going to take number one for our first example here. And down here, it says the location of, af of the datum. So that's talking about where our arm is itself. And then what we're talking about here is going to be all the weights that we have as well, right? So number one here. We're gonna go look for where our arm is, and it looks like it's at 88, so we're gonna go at 88 here. Uh, and then we're gonna be looking for this weight here, and it's going to be 2301.2. So we're gonna go 88, go all the way up here, all the way up here. Let me see here. 23, we'll estimate it gonna be right here. So what I'll do is we'll put a little dot I'll circle that dot and I'll put a one next to it, knowing that is my ramp and takeoff weight. So now the landing weight, we want to plot that as well. So we have the 21, 81, and 87. So on my plot here, I would go down to the CG where we find right back here, we got 87, 71. So we'll go roughly right in the middle here uh, as we'll come up. And then we're looking now for the 21, 81, or 21, 81. So we're going to roughly put it right here in this spot here. And what I'm going to do is put another circle there and two. Now this is showing me that I'm in my normal category and I'm not too far aft where I'm too far overweight or too far forward where I'm underweight. Right? Uh, and this allows us to know that we're in a safe conditions to be able to take off uh, without worrying about if we could actually lift the aircraft off or the climb. And when it comes back to it, when we're talking about weight and balance, it is a cr crucial part and it comes back to the reg of finding the takeoff distance, landing distance, over 50 foot obstacles, uh, and the pressure and density altitude, which all affect how your aircraft is gonna perform for that day. Um, so this is weight and balance. So there are easier ways to do it on the phone, iPads, doing the weight and balance, and it gets all the numbers calculated for you. It throws all that information in. But on the check ride, they're gonna to wanna to know where that number came from, how it's used, how did you find it? So this is where it comes to doing it calculated and doing it by hand. So guys, that wraps up today's video. If you guys want way more in depth about weight and balance, Liz has a great article on our website. And you can find that link down below. And if you haven't subscribed, go down and subscribe for us.